Well, praise the Lord. We're so glad to be live with you tonight and we give the Lord glory, honor, and praise. Tonight is going to be a praise of honor. Amen. And I just came to encourage the people of God. I come in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We come by his holy name. And tonight I want to share. I ask all of you to come on as we are uh, from uh, live Grand Bahama. And what a, uh, an experience to come through what we came through. But to God be all the glory, honor, and praise as we talk about what has happened and uh, the recovery process. And I'm telling you, after you come through the storm, amen? We have to give him glory. So tonight, we're going to be tuning in. If you're here, tune in quickly. Let people know to tune in. We have a word for the nation. My God, God bless you. Uh, yeah, we are safe. First of all, we give the Lord glory, honor, and praise for his safety and protection. Thank you, Stefan, uh, Ramish, Shema. God bless you. Thank you all for calling and checking in on us. It is truly a blessing to hear from you. And thank you for all of your prayers. The prayers are still going on for the city and for the nation. What an encounter it was to be in a storm with a wind factors of 175 miles per hour. My God, to see winds blow that amount, to see rains and winds and the storm. And they're sitting there for 20 plus hours. Amen. Uh, what an experience. And the stories, I'm hearing stories of miracles of rescue and God's keeping people. Hallelujah. During the storm, we are well kept. My family and I are fine. We give the Lord glory, honor, and praise. I want to talk tonight to encourage. I'll, while I was going through this, the Lord put this in my heart. And I want to share this. I'm coming from 1 Peter. 1 Peter. God bless you. 1 Peter chapter 1. Verse 1. We're going to read that whole chapter. The Lord ministered me. Why? Because I want to just give him praise. I want to give him worship. I want to give him glory for what he's done. Because after you've come through your storm, hallelujah, man, only thing it can do is make you stronger or weaker. Share this because I'm going to be going into some things. And those who are signed up, we're going to have a praise of thought. We're going to have a worship time. We're going to have a worship experience tonight. Hallelujah. We're going to get into this word tonight because I've made a commitment that I'm going to be stronger in the word than ever before. Because the kingdom of God is at hand. Yes? All right, so First Peter, I want to talk about First Peter, the Lord put this in my heart this morning while praying this whole week. Hallelujah, if you hear some noise, we have a lot of people still around. Hallelujah. First Peter said, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, come on, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. Okay. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. Grace and peace be multiplied. Now we were praying for God to move. We were praying for the storm to shift from the beginning. We were praying for the storm not to come, but to God be the glory. Let his will and purpose be done. Hallelujah. And now that his will and purpose is being done, now this is the time to rise up. My spirit has been charged. The first time my family and I, we slept through the storm. I'm telling you, the Lord gave us peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Hallelujah. I mean, the peace of God. I thank the Lord that we must prepare way before spiritually our spirits for times like these. Hallelujah. And now during the storm, we were in prayer and worship. And after the storm, I'm charged like never before to declare the kingdom of Jesus Christ around the world. And to help to declare it in my city and in my nation as we rebuild. And we're going to need to rebuild by faith. We got to rebuild by faith. We got to rebuild by faith. So Peter, this apostle talks about being elect according to the foreknowledge. Now, verse two it says, "We are sanctified by the Holy Spirit." And I just want to let you know, we're going to be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. To you and Grand Bahama, by the sprinkling of the blood. We talked about the blood before the storm. There's still power in the blood. You know, God still sits on His throne. The Lord is still seated on his throne, Natasha. Elizabeth, good to see you. He's still Lord. He's still God, Heather. And we give him praise. The storm doesn't change his lordship. The storm doesn't change the power of the blood of Jesus. And I want you to know that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grace and peace will be multiplied. Now, 1 Peter 1 and 3 said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again, Unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Again, 
I'm just sharing something to encourage all of us. We've got about 100 people on here. We're going to have an encouraging time. I want to give you what the Lord put in my heart to encourage us. Then we're going to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. You know what it is to worship in the midst of the storm? Peter's going to talk about it. He's going to talk about it. After you come out, after you've been refined, you're going to be made purer than fine gold. That's what we're getting to. But in verse 3, it says, of 1 Peter, Hallelujah. We have abundant mercy from the Lord. In spite of what is happening, the Lord has been merciful. It could have been worse. Hallelujah. I saw the waters raising and the stories are coming about the waters raising. Do you know if the Lord didn't hold back his hand? Hallelujah. That that water would have come through the whole island and covered us all. My God. No amount of battening on the windows and no amount of preparation, which we should do and which many people did do. But the waters came. Hallelujah. You do know that the God had to hold back the water from coming over this island. Ten miles wide, this ocean, could have, we could have been swallowed up by the ocean. But by the abundant mercy of the Lord, through his resurrection, he gave us hope. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, uh, first Peter. We're still in First Peter now. 1 and verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. Now, it, listen to me now. Listen to me. This is what I want to get at. Houses have been lost, cars and property and so many things. Yes, that's valuable. Yes, that's important. Yes, it hurts. Yes, all across the city and Abaco and, and, and other parts of the country have been lost. But listen to what Peter says. Peter said, and this is what the Lord put in my heart to share with you. And you know this is a prophetic time because this is straight in the midst of the storm. We just The storm winds just passed us a few minutes ago. Uh, what Peter said, we have an inheritance incorruptible. You know, our, our inheritance is not of this world only. I mean the house, the car, the properties. I've been teaching on seeking the kingdom of God and letting all other things be added. And I'm telling you, um, you know, when you're in this situation, you realize life and eternal life is more important. Life and eternal life is more important than anything because our inheritance is incorruptible. Where is our inheritance? Reserve us in heaven. We still have to remain heaven-minded and heaven-focused. Come on. We have to remain heaven-minded because our incorruptible prize is in heaven. All right? Verse, uh, I want you to get that. Our inheritance, man, house, car, clothes, they can be replaced. Our inheritance is in Christ Jesus and it is incorruptible. It faded not away according to Peter. Now, First Peter 1, 5 said, Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Listen, in these last times, we are going to be kept by the power of God. And this city, this nation is being kept by the power of God. Ready to be revealed in these last times. You know what that means? It means that, my God, God is going to use some people in this hour, in this time, because of the salvation, because he's kept us to declare some things in these last hours. Are you with me? Are you one of those people? To declare his mighty acts. Now, let's look at that. First Peter 1 and 6. Let's keep moving. This first Peter is loaded. This is a prophetic word for us in this city and this nation at this time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice... Watch verse Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6, wherein he greatly rejoice. Now, Peter is saying we are to rejoice. Watch this. Though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptation, that the trial of your fate, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearance of Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to break that down. Peter is saying this, that we rejoice. Now, it's interesting to rejoice in the midst of the storm, to say, Lord, we praise you, we worship you, we honor you in the midst of a storm. Hallelujah. But he's encouraging us to rejoice. House is gone, car is gone, clothes is gone, pictures are gone, memories are gone. Hallelujah. Even sadly, some lost loved ones. Hallelujah. He's saying we are to rejoice, though for a season uh, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. We are in heaviness, a lot of people, through the temptation, the trial that's going through. But he said, listen, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than that of gold 
that perishing. You know, our faith, listen, my faith, your faith, our faith in Christ is more than buildings. It's more than gold. It's more than clothes. It's more than shoes. Our faith, our inheritance is incorruptible. And I want to let you know our trial, let me tell, let me speak to me as I speak to you. Our faith was put on trial. Hallelujah. Category five, winds blowing. Waters coming in. Our faith was being tried. We could have cursed God. We could have gotten angry. We could have gotten bitter. But we intensified the prayer. We intensified the worship. What was God doing? Putting our faith on trial. We, our faith was in the court of heaven. And he was checking out our faith. Trying it against the circumstances. But I want to let some of you know. Who faith stood strong. Who prayed. Who worshiped. Your faith has been tried. And you won the case. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your faith has been tried. Your faith has been tested. Get ready for promotion. Get ready to be used by God. Get ready for the fire of God to be upon you. Get ready for your faith to impact the world. Are you ready this evening Grand Bahamas? Are you ready Bahamas? Your faith has been tested. Get ready to be the shining light to the nations for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Praise God. I'm on fire. I just came out of category 5 and it had it not been for the Lord, the water would have swallowed and engulfed me and my family up. Praise the Lord. And we're still in the recovery. But my test has been tried. And we've been tried by the judge of heaven. And it's been found to be uncorruptible. Pure. Coming out more than a gold. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have to talk about coming through a storm. We just came through a storm. Can I get some amen from those who just came through a storm? That it be more precious than gold. And might be found. What are we talking about? Our faith. And to praise and honor and glory at the appearance of Jesus. Well, our faith has been made purer than ever before. Because I'm telling you, when storms come, you begin to pray. You begin to search. You begin to set your heart on the Lord. You begin to lose focus of life and the things of life. And realize the value of life comes into clear focus. Your purpose comes into clear focus. Your assignment comes into clear focus. Hallelujah. And you realize life is more. I've heard the stories of many people. Hallelujah. And their story. They were faced with life and death. And in the midst of life and death. Hallelujah. Their faith was made. Focus. I have a focused faith tonight. Whom have it not seen ye love. And whom now ye see him not yet believing. This is talking about our faith. Being tried and tested. Even though we don't see Jesus. Our faith in him is increasing. You rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Again, the Bible talks about rejoicing. Rejoice. Jump up clamorously. Praise and shout. Hallelujah. Folk and think you're mad during this time. Because what it is? You lost your house, your car, your land, your property and everything. And here it is. You're praising. You're worshiping. You're giving God glory in the midst of this psalm. God bless you. Hallelujah. You're giving God praise in the midst. Hallelujah. A 14 foot water in your house. Hallelujah. You're giving God praise in spite of not knowing. Hallelujah. When things are going to change and what's going to happen. You are giving God praise. And every time you do that, your faith is being tried and is being tested. And the God of heaven is rewarding. He's taking note. The angels of heaven are taking note. And they're testing your faith. And your faith will produce power. And your faith is going to produce miracles. Your faith. Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. I want to declare tonight as your faith is being tried, it is your faith that's going to make you whole. What do I mean by whole? You're going to be healed, delivered, set free. You're going to rebuild. Man, this is going to be a supernatural. I declare it's going to be a supernatural thing. Hallelujah. Last storm in 2016, there were over a thousand light poles knocked down. Hallelujah. Praise God. We will spare this time. Our faith. Why? Because during the storm, people were praying and believing. Hallelujah. And the mercy of God stepped down. And our faith has caused the storm to shift. Hallelujah. That storm was hovering over us for 24 plus hours. Circling. Not knowing when it would come. Tide was coming in. Tide was going on. But the working of our faith produced the miracle. It's going to be the working of our faith saints that are going to cause the city to be rebuilt. It's going to be the working of the faith that's going to cause supernatural finances and resources. It's going to be the working of our faith that's going to cause nations to pour in gifts and resources and favor and goodness to rebuild, to show love. It's going to be the working of the faith that's going to draw saints to pray and intercede for angelic rescue. It's going to be the working of our faith. 
God bless you, Francis. First Peter 1 and 8. Whom have not seen ye love, and whom, though you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. The word salvation means healed, delivered, protected, uh, shielded. Hallelujah. I want to tell you that the blood of Jesus still kept us. And moving forward is the working of our faith, which is going to bring the salvation of our soul. Hallelujah. What is the soul? The mind, body, soul, and emotion. I'm talking about it. I, it is supernatural to see people who are being in their attics for two days with a joy. I'm seeing them. I'm talking with them. People with a joy. Hallelujah. Who are walking up like nothing happened because their faith, because their minds are being shielded by the blood of Jesus. That their faith is strong. That they are worshiping. Hallelujah. Even though they face death, day and night to darkness, their faith is strong. What an amazing God. What an amazing faith of the people. Hallelujah. My God. Verse, uh, First Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. I'm talking about the prophets back in the Old Testament looked into the future and wanted this type of faith. A faith in the living Jesus whom we have not seen and whom we are fixed in our faith, trusting and believing him. The prophets declared it years ago and we are walking in and we are seeing it. Good to see. All right. Verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glory that should follow. Okay. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to see. The angels desire to see what we're seeing. Hallelujah. <laughs> My God, my faith is fired up. What about you? Hallelujah. When you face life and death, you can face any giant. Hallelujah. We just face the giant of Dorian, but we have the strength to overcome every obstacle afterwards. Come on, praise him. First Peter, I'm talking about the trial of our faith. I'm talking about our faith in Christ. I'm talking about even though we're tested, our faith is being on trial. And we have passed the test. Grand Baham Abu, you have passed the test. Get ready. First Peter 1. 13, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. I have to speak to us. We have to be sober. Watch this. Gird up the loins of your mind. Lift up your mind. Hallelujah. Your faith is incorruptible. It's not like these corruptible things that pass it away. Gird up your loins. Strengthen your mind. It's not a, I'm telling you now, uh, this command is not a begging or pleading. You're going to make it in this time. You're going to have to, it's a command. Gird up the loins of your mind. Raise up your mind. Raise up your thinking. Stabilize your thoughts and your emotion. And your will and your desire and your focus. Set it on Christ. Be focused. Be determined. Be, be committed to standing in your God. That's what he's saying. Because depression wants to set in. Anxiety and fear wants to come in. Are you going to feel some of these things? Yes. But you have a choice to gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. And hope to the end. That's what Peter said to us in 1 Peter 1 and 13. Gird up the loins of your mind. Put, put, a, put, put something on your mind and be strong. I'm sweating here. Be sober. And hope to the end. We're going to hope to the end. I'm done hoping halfway. I'm hoping to the end. We're going to stand strong, every one of you and I. In the light of the destruction, we're going to hope. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. But hope is a part of it. Now, faith... It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is what we hope for. Now, faith and hope work together. We're talking about the triad of our faith. It's incorruptible. And that faith works with hope. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you're going to have faith and hope, uh, you've you got to listen to what the word of God says now. 
I, I've turned off the TV, I've heard what all the international news is saying. I monitor them, monitor them periodically through the storm. Now I'm getting in my fit. I'm standing in the word because I need hope. I need hope when I drive back on the streets. You need hope when you go to those homes that are damaged. You need hope when you drive through the city. You need hope when you call your loved ones and relatives. You need hope. And that hope is going to come from your faith. And your faith is going to come from the word. Hallelujah. What Jesus says. What is faith? Faith is what the word of God says. We're going to need hope. We're going to need faith. And we're going to need it from the word. All right. Let's get moving. Hoping to the end, for the grace that is brought unto you are the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, the revelation of Jesus Christ is what's going to bring the hope. I'm not just talking about some hope in, in, in just things going to get better because somebody said it. It doesn't happen like that. We are saints. It doesn't work like that. You don't just uh, magically believe something's going to happen. No, it doesn't work like that. You've got to get in the Word. If you need provisions, you need to get in the Word. You need to get all the Word that talks about provision. You need to rebuild, you need to get in the Word that talks about rebuilding. If you need uh, healing, you need the Word that relates to healing. If you need uh, finances, you need to get in the Word related to finances. We're talking about grounded faith. Pistos. Ah, pistos, which means faith, like a peg planted in the ground, solid, firm. We need that type of faith in the Word. Anchoring faith. This is the time to have anchoring faith, I call it. Strongly. You can pass. You can pass. Hallelujah. Strong faith. Unmovable faith. Hallelujah. Good day. Good night. Good night. Go ahead. Okay. 1 Peter 1, 14. We're just staying in Peter tonight. Uh, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Now, we can't go back to the old way. Now, now I, I'm not here to talk about all that. You've heard all the prophets talk about what happened and what judgment and that. That is not my concern. But what he is saying, Peter is saying to the church and speaking to you and I now, it doesn't change. Come, 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 come. Uh, and, and it's talking about Obedience now. You now, 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 now. We can't be disobedient now. I want Grand Bahama and Abaco and the whole country there. We can't be disobedient children now. No, this ain't no game now. This is life and death stuff. We can't be disobedient. We can't go back to disobedience. No, God ain't gonna work like that. No, God doesn't work like that. We're gonna stand on His word. We're gonna live by the word, and we're gonna see the results of His word. Now, if you wanna be disobedient, it's not. This is not gonna work for you. There's no, no. It's no halfway. What we need is supernatural miracle. We can't go halfway in this now. All right? Okay, I'm not going to tell you this is for everyone. This is for the obedient. Peter is saying in 1 Peter, okay, 14, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Now, you might have been ignorant in the past of what you did and how you did it. And we were in disobedient, I was in disobedient, and we said, I saw it all online, everyone was repenting, I'm sorry, and Lord have mercy now. He's saying, now you can't go back to ignorance. Don't go back to the same old thing. Don't go back to the same old ways. Don't go back to the same old practices. No, it's not going to work. Faith is not going to work for you. It's not going to work for you this time. All right? Now, we got to get this serious now, okay? Now, okay. Now, First Peter. Verse 1, chapter 1, verse 15. But as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Now, I heard some people cussing and carrying on. No, he said, no, no, come on now. Come on. All right? Even as he is holy, we got to be holy and we're going to make it through. All right? No, no, no. We can't be ignorant in your conversation. Now, I'm not speaking dead and doubt and disbelief and fail. No, you're not going to work like that. You've got to guide your mouth, speak faith, think faith, walk faith. Let's talk it again. Speak faith, think faith, walk faith. All right? Which is 24 7 the word. Amen? Well, uh, I'm not being real. Some of you might say, no, it is faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And, and we speak. Uh, there's power and life and death in that tongue. We're going to speak this. We're going to walk this, and we're going to see everything that God promises manifested, all right? So be holy now, even as your heavenly Father is holy. Hallelujah. No, no, don't go back. Verse 16 says, but it is written, be holy, for I am holy. And everyone in the Bahamas and the world know what holy means, okay? I don't need to go into that. Hallelujah. You can't know. we got to be holy this time now. God spared us. We could have been dead and dead in our sins. But we're going to be holy this time now. We're going to be holy now. We're going to be a holy people. 
For we are holy people, a holy nation, called for to show the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We got to be holy now. We are holy people. We are covenant people. I'm telling you, in this country, we are covenant people. We are covenant people. We have a covenant with Jehovah God, the God of heaven and earth. That's why he spared us. Don't, live, don't think it's for any other reason. And don't think it's for any other reason. The waters could have washed from the south to the north. And with one hurricane, the hurricane was bigger than almost half the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. With one storm, we could have been under complete water. It's because we are holy people. Because the righteous are still here. The seed of righteousness is still with us. We have a seed of righteousness in us. But that seed need to come up now. That seed need to come up. Okay? Hallelujah. Okay. Now, verse 17. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 17. We're staying in this chapter for a while. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fail. If you call on the Father. Now, this is we going to have to call on the Father now. More than ever before. And he is no respecter of person. The black, the white, the poor, the rich. Huh? Wherever you're from in the world, if you call upon him, he's no respecter of person. So if you have faith and you call upon the Lord, he's no respecter. That means he will give equally to everyone according to their faith, according to their purpose in him. Are you with me? Y'all are quiet, but that's all right. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, here again, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by traditions from your father. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. There again, this is the whole message tonight. We have not been with corruptible. I had to see that the storm. I had to see that. That these things are corruptible. They perish. They're perishable there. And you know, a house is perishable. Uh, your furniture is perishable. Your clothes are perishable. Your food is perishable. Everything, your life is perishable. But listen here, we have been purchased, we have been redeemed by something that's incorruptible. That's our hope. And what is that incorruptible thing? The precious blood of Christ. The precious blood of Christ is incorruptible. I'm so glad for the blood of Jesus. It means nothing that is taken away. If I just have the blood of Jesus, I'm incorruptible. If I have just the blood of Jesus, I could hold on to that. It's more tangible than a shirt, a punch, a clothes, a house, a city, a building, a business. Hallelujah. The corrupt, incorruptible, tangible blood of Jesus. We don't think about the blood of Jesus being tangible. It is tangible. It is, you can feel it. It has weight. It will never lose its power and weight and in eternity. Hallelujah. We can build new houses and um, whatever can take it. These are corruptible things. They will perish. They will continue to perish. But we must put our faith in the incorruptible precious blood of Jesus as the Lamb of God without blemish and without spot. Verse 20. 1 Peter 1 and 20. For who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you. Jesus was Slain. The Bible said the Lamb of God that was slain before the very foundation of the world. Can you imagine that? Before the foundation of the world. That means everything in this world will pass away. But the blood of Jesus will remain incorruptible, unchangeable, full of power, full of grace. And it's the only thing that we have assurance of. Come on. Thank you. Praise the Lord. At least I got one person here with me. Uncorruptible, unchanging blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'd rather have the blood of Jesus than a house, than a car, than a property, than a vehicle. Because those things that come and go, they're going to rot, they're going to pass away. I'd rather have the blood of Jesus than have confidence in my own body, this old body. Oh, these old bodies will pass away, but the incorruptible blood of Jesus will never lose its strength, power in all of eternity. Verse 20, you can pass. First Peter 1 and 21. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and give him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Listen then. Zion, God bless you. Jesus is manifesting these last days. And let me tell you, these are truly the last days. If you think a storm could develop this way, though, no. I'm telling you, one of the greatest storms in all of the history of hurricanes, not only in this country, in this region, but the world. Don't tell me these are not the last and critical days. 
Don't tell me that Jesus is not revealing himself with power in his last and final days. Who by him do believe in God that raised him from the dead and give him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Listen here, your faith and hope in these last days must be in God, must be in God. Thank you, Zion. Must be in God. Verse 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfinged love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Now, listen to me now. After we talk about faith, after we talk about hope, after we talk about the blood of Jesus, after we talk about an incorruptible faith, after we talk about an incorruptible faith in Christ Jesus, Peter goes on to say, now you got to show the love now. Yes. you gotta, you got to show the love now. This is the time to act crazy. All right? This is time we got to work together. This is time we got to support one another, showing the love of Christ. I, I'm, I'm committed this time. That as the body of Christ, as the part of the church, we're not going to let like the last storms where the church didn't arise. We at the church must arise and be at the forefront of challenging and changing and building the city. This is going to come from the kingdom of God. And it's going to come through the word of God. we got to build the people first. Hallelujah. Build their faith. Don't worry about the buildings. We're going to get to the buildings. And my job is to build the faith. My work is to show the love and the glory of God, the compassion of Christ Jesus. We must see the compassion. Faith without work, faith working by love. Your faith will not work by love. And it's not a material thing. If you give someone a word of encouragement, a prayer, call them, minister them, pray with them, seek how they're, how they're doing. I'm talking about, oh, who, who man, my listening. I don't even know what my house, where it is right now. Praise God. It doesn't matter to me. I'm, I'm safe and sound. And I'm here declaring the word of the Lord, not knowing even what's happening in my own house. But God is faithful because the faith, my faith working by love. Without love, it's nothing. Your faith is nothing in Christ Jesus without the love of God. And we must show the love. How do we show the love? We are going to show the love of God. We're going to show the compassion of God. Hallelujah. I challenge every leader in the body of Christ. We can wait on government. Government can do their thing. But we're the government of heaven. Hallelujah. We're the government of heaven. And we're going to start. We're going to use this opportunity to show people the love of God. House to house. City to um, town to town. Neighborhood to neighborhood. The young, the old, the black, the white. Hallelujah. The rich and the poor. We are all come down to one level now. Now this is the greatest opportunity to show the glory of the love of Jesus Christ. Would you arise? I want some saints to arise. Yes. If the pastors don't want to do it, let's go saints. Right. Let's help pick up. Let's go find someone. Let's take them. Share half your water. Yes. Share half your food. Yes. Uh, bring someone into your house. Yes. And while you're there, give them the faith. Give them the hope in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. This is what we're going to do. Showing the brethren yes. love. Hallelujah. Pure. Now, 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 now. Not trying to get something out of it. Hallelujah. We're not, we're not trying. Philippians, Peter is saying, no, no, no. Peter is saying, no, do fervently and pure. It means, you know what, pure and hard, fervently. He says, see that you love one another with a pure heart. Now, this ain't to get something back. Hallelujah. All of these people, I, this is not to raise money, to thief the money. Hallelujah. That Lord God rebukes you if you are trying to thief money. If you're trying to raise money to thief it, to put it in your pockets, to take you in a, No, no, don't fool with God with that now. This is not the time for that. There is this is the time to raise the support for people yes. and give it to them. Yes. I call I challenge some business people. Yeah, buildings might be closed, but money is still in the bank. The minute the bank opens, I challenge some of you business people in this country to put a 20-foot container when the ports open and send it. Food, water, clothes. I challenge some churches throughout this country not to just say prayer. Prayer is finished now. It's time to show some pure, fervent love. Fervent means passionate love. I don't, I don't want, no, 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 no. I can watch this time and you're going to hear my voice. Last time I was silent, I won't be silent this time. I'm going to challenge some pastors, some leaders, some churches, you with all your organizations who've been coming to Grand Bahama and having conferences and making money when things was good and making money come now. It's time to bring a 20-foot container. It's time to bring a 40-foot container. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's time to send some uh, shipment of containers of goods. It's time to send some clothes. It's time for you to pack up your, your evangelistic team, bring them over here and go street to street, door to door, giving people hope. Bring them water, bring them Bibles, bring them prayers, bring them hope. Get out! Yes. 
I'm going to see what the kingdom of God does. If you don't do it, I'm prepared to do it. Hallelujah. With some other serious people. We're going to show the love of God. We're going to show the love. We're going to lead this thing this time. Pure and fervent love. Fervent means it doesn't stop. It's fiery. It's passionate. Like how I'm carrying on tonight. Because it's a fervency. It's a passion. There's a desire. A strong desire. That we show the love of God one to another. First Peter 1 Peter 1 23. Being born again. Not of corruptible seed. Again, we're talking about corruptible and incorruptible. But of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Now the word of God is going to abide forever. You know what I mean? Jesus is still Lord. Storm or no storm. Dorian, it could have wiped out the whole nation and we all could have been underwater, but Jesus still would have been Lord. Hallelujah. And he didn't allow that to happen. To God be the glory. He could have, he could have done whatever he wanted. Did he send storm? No, but God allows things for his divine purpose and will. But he could have, my God, he could have done whatever. He's still sovereign. The word of God is still eternal. Yeah. Hallelujah. The word of God is still eternal. It is unchanging and uncorruptible. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which live in and abide forever. Now, watch this. Happy you're all alive. Yes. First Peter 1 and 24. I want you to get this now, Lord God. Thank you for your prayer and support. Yeah. Now watch this. First Peter 1 and 24. For all flesh is as grass. That's reassuring. Listen here. I, I, I'm sweating here. All flesh is as grass. After coming out of a major storm, you realize all flesh is grass. You know what I mean? And all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth and the flower thereof faded away. You know, sometimes we think we're more than other folk, you know. I watch it around the city. Sometimes we feel, you know, we're more high because of our degree, because our profession, because we, we live in a big house, a big car, we have a good business. But guess what? This storm told us to wipe the the black, the poor, the rich, everybody, the young and the old, we are like grass. You know that in a split second, we could have been dead and gone out of this life. And if we don't die by the storm, one day we're going to die. And you know, this flesh is nothing. Why do we have confidence in this flesh? Why do we have confidence in the desires of this flesh? Why do we have confidence in this old flesh that's going to fade away? Like a grass, this is going to fade away. But what is going to endure? First Peter 1 and 25. But the word of the Lord endured forever. I rather trust this than any man. I rather trust this than any person talking right now. Prophet, no prophet. If you're not talking from the word of God, I'm sorry. I, I'm not too interested. I'm not too interested in what anybody says. It is not from the word. Because my hope and confidence is in this word tonight. Yes. But the word of God endured forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. I'm going to wrap it up tonight. Peter in his encouragement. And I encourage you tonight from 1 Peter. That our faith is incorruptible. Praise God. I'm talking. You're talking to someone who just came out of category 5. Where a storm was coming 15 to 20 feet high. Face life and death and a, a, a daring, staring in your face for almost 30 hours. Yes. Many others who face death, but their faith is resilient. Oh my God, I've talked, I'm speaking with many whose faith, unbelievable, unshaken faith in their God. And I knew it's not because of them only, it was because people like you prayed and stand. But now we're going to need faith to build this city, build our lives. And hallelujah, I want to let you take, I want to encourage you to take your mind of life. Hallelujah. That's what the storm taught me. Take your mind of the cars and the spending your money on clothes. Okay, clothes are gone. Stainless steel, fridge and stove, gone. Flat screen TVs, gone. Yes. China closets, China, gone. Furniture set, front room set, dining room set, granite corner tops, gone. BMW, Mercedes, Lexus, Hondas, gone. Gucci, Versace, hallelujah. Rhinestone outfits, dresses, five piece suits, 
gone, corruptible, corruptible, fading, corruptible, fading, corruptible, jewelry, rings, gold, diamond, emeralds, ruby, in the ocean. We got to take note of this. In the ocean. Yes. But my God, those of you who had faith in Christ Jesus, like we did, who worship and pray through the storm, my faith is charged more than ever before in my lifetime. I am more focused than ever before. You who have come through the storm, you saints here and in Abaco and Grand Bahama and throughout the entire country who prayed over the last 36 to 48 hours than ever before but for you and your family and your loved ones you've interceded, you repented, you worshiped, you prayed, you fasted, you sang, you believed, you stood on the word, you prayed, you saw my God, our faith is charged. Get ready world because there was a group of people who just came through the storm of life, who came through natural storm, who have been uh, grounded their faith in an incorruptible Jesus Christ, who have lost all touch with the things, no good soldier, who is, uh, um, my God, focused on Christ, entangles himself with the things of this life. Hallelujah. There are some people coming from these northern islands whose faith is guaranteed, whose faith is fixed whose faith is settled in Christ Jesus, who have no more earthly attachment to things of this life other than the faith they have, the incorruptible in Christ Jesus. Yes, and out of that faith, they're going to love their families, they're going to serve, they're going to build, but they're going to wear loosely these all corruptible things and focus on that which is incorruptible. Hallelujah. We set our eyes on Christ Jesus, looking unto the author and the finisher of our faith. We set our eyes fixed, Grand Bahama, on Christ Jesus, on Christ the solid rock we stand, all other ground is sinking sand, we saw sinking sand, 